Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and oh, what a wonderful day, getting a lot done. Thank you very much, Google Tasks. <laughs> so I designed the cover concept for Jawbreakers Forever, sent that off to the uh, artist, and then uh, I had to look up the Undertaker meme, you know, the one where he appears from behind you, uh, to show an example of possible lighting scheme for some of the characters on there. Then I was going to do a video on this absolute perfection of a composition. I'll do that probably this uh, weekend. And then somebody sent me this and I said, all right, <laughs> let's go. Before I start, $4.99 graphic novel, rock and roll ninja graphic novel. Links are in the description. Both of these are the entire story. They're, they are square bound graphic novels. So um, kind of a flex right here, Berserker and Noctera which both had very successful Kickstarters uh, last year. They're both releasing their first issue. Um, it gets a little confusing. The Noctera Kickstarter was a black and white version of the first issue, kind of a director's cut where it showed the script, but it sounds like some of the dialogue changed by the time they release it. I think that's a cool concept. Berserker, if you remember correctly, when you ordered it, it was a little confusing, but um, you could choose, I believe, I believe you'll get you're gonna get like three issues mailed to you separately or for cheaper you could wait till they were all done and they would be mailed together I don't know I'll review these uh, this weekend but um funny little thing happened <laughs> so uh, Scott Snyder announced that he was doing a Kickstarter and that was a problem because it was uh, not a good look according to uh, Twitter psychos uh, and so uh, Scott Snyder has been targeted for a while. Uh, why? So in 2018, it was a thing to denounce Comicsgate. It was basically demanded by Twitter psychos. And it wasn't just like once. Like every two or three months, they would go through, you know, a mandatory denouncement where every single person was expected to check in. And then Scott Snyder was camping with his family. So then when he came back, he was, I'm not shitting you, lectured by Heather Antos. Uh, he's, he's always been targeted. Last year, it was revealed that one, you know, there's not one whisper network. There are multiple ones. Uh, but one of them was basically prepping. Uh, their, they were kind of like ginning each other up for like what their accusations. It was, it was a really vague like emotional labor. It's like when he talks to me on the phone, like, he says a bunch of shit from his day, and like, they're basically saying like, they're not getting paid. It's like, sorry he was talking to you like you're a person, um, but everything is transactional when it comes to SJWs. Uh, so, then, weirdly enough, the recently fired political commissar from Kickstarter was announced as managing Scott's Kickstarter campaign. Which everyone basically took to be a quid pro quo in that if he hires Camilla, the Whisper Network will lay off of him and let him have his campaign in peace. Here's where the funny thing happened. <laughs> Scott actually expected Camilla to do work. And she was not about that life. Uh, she has done multiple uh, tweets complaining about the work, saying she will never do anything like it again. It made me laugh so hard. Again, this is conjecture, it's parody, I don't have any specific accusations, but it reminded me of, you know, the scene from the movie where the mafia goes into the restaurant and says, nice little place here. Shame if something would happen to it. And then they want, you know, they want something every week. They want a payout. So I just imagine this really, really dumb restaurateur. And he's like, oh, great. Um. Wow, thanks, what a great service. Uh, so he hires them, and they're like, okay, cool. You know, he pays them every week. And then like six months later, there's a grease fire. So he, so, so when they come in to take the weekly, uh, you know, pay, he goes, uh, he's, he goes, hey, we had a grease fire. And they're like, yeah, so what are we supposed to do about it? He's like, well, you know, I've been paying you this money every week so that nothing bad would happen. And so you're gonna cover it, right? You're gonna handle the expenses or you're gonna send some people to, you know, repair the damage from the grease fire? They're like, I'm sorry, do you think we're like a legitimate insurance company? <laughs> like bonded and everything? No, no, we're threatening you. Uh, so it must have been the most hilarious 
awkward conversation when Scott calls uh, Camilla. He's he's like, oh, yeah, so we're we're done with the print file. We're about to go to print, so we're ready for you to start, you know, managing the fulfillment. She's like, what? <laughs> I just imagine her talking to the Whisper Network like. So I was just talking to Scott. They're like, oh my god, did he tell you about his day? No, worse. Um, I'm supposed to actually, like, manage the campaign that I was managing? This is Camilla quitting before the work is done. Like I said, SJWs will never make your life easier. First of all, Scott was basically, you know, let's say encouraged to hire Camilla, even though she had never done this before. Yes, she had worked at Kickstarter, but she was in this weird political commissar gatekeeper. She had never done the actual hard work of fulfilling a campaign. When the going gets tough, she bounced. Again, please don't contact her or anyone mentioned in this video. Hello, Noctera fam. Oh, jeez. TLDR. Due to personal and professional developments and a family health crisis, I, Camilla, need to take a step back from backer support. Full story. I've gotten to know some of you and didn't want to bid farewell without a proper goodbye and explanation. Some folks might think this is TMI, too much information, but I'm a firm believer that Kickstarter is meant to be a place where you're part of a community. Oh, Jesus. Just because there's communists in it doesn't mean it's a community. It, it, it's not a fucking community. It's not Smurf Village. People used a platform, Kickstarter, to order a book. They paid for it. Now it's your job, Camilla to fulfill it. I'm a firm believer that Kickstarter is meant to be a place where you're part of a community. I'm not a faceless campaign manager or customer service person. SJWs loathe being compared to any sort of actual worker. They, Whenever I say you're a hot dog vendor, that drives them insane. Uh, they have this weird, insane hatred for the working class, which is weird because they make actually less you go get an actual trade out there, you're making easily double what these SJWs in media are making. And I'm talking about what they make in New York City, you're making double in the Midwest. Uh, so they always have this weird, like, catty, you know, like, um, this is not customer service. No, your, your job is actually customer service. You are serving the customer the books that they paid for months ago. I'm not a customer service person, though some would like to see and treat me that way, asterisk. We'll see what's up with the asterisk. So what's going on? I've recently joined Z2 Comics as a full-time senior editor, and I'm also part of a startup as their chief product officer. When you add it all up, this camel's got a lot of straws on her back. As much as I'd like to see projects through to the end, I gotta take a break. But take care, everyone. See you on the internet. And then here, here's the asterisk. Side note. So you're going to get a lecture. <laughs> Not only is she going to be, this is a hypothesis, uh, inveigling herself uh, as a way for Scott to at least believe the Whisper Network would, you know, lay off of him if he hired her. Then, in some sort of M. Night Shyamalan plot twist, <laughs> Scott expected her to do the work that he hired her for. She was not about that life, and now she is using any and all excuses to bounce before the job is done. She can't finish the job she was hired for, but she can take two other jobs. It's amazing. That's a unique uh, take on multitasking. It's an SJW. They can't just leave. They're gonna lecture you on the way out. Side note, even when dealing with a customer service agent, please remember that there's a human on the other side. If you start your comment or question with a snippy tone, you're not likely to get what you want. Hold, oh my God. How... What do they say? So much to unpack here. Um, the tone doesn't matter unless it's extremely abusive, such as you know, hurling, you know, racial uh, homophobic epithets. You're gonna catch heat. I am, I'm getting the business right now. I am late on multiple projects, and quite frankly, uh, people are getting pissed, and I'm under a lot of stress, and Google Tasks is really saving my ass, but people are not happy. So much so that when I even show something I've done, like, hey, I just sent out this perk to these backers, they're just like, okay, so where's my damn book? 
Are the tones snippy? <laughs> I think that's a subjective uh, assessment. They're not happy. Let's just say they're not happy. They are bothered uh, and I would say borderline angry. Some of them are pretty darn blunt. Uh, whose fault is that? Mine. I'm late. Uh, you're the customer service person. You're the point of contact. Like I said, unless they are harassing you, stalking you, or just being extremely verbally abusive, their snippy tone, that is just part of, that's part of the job is dealing with their snippy tone. And also this, you're not likely to get what you want. What the fuck does that mean? Are you going to not fulfill their order? Are you going to refund it? I think the worst I've ever done is when someone was actually kind of really rude. I just answered the email the next day. I was just like, I mean, I'm going to answer this, but that was actually pretty darn rude. I'm kind of, I'm going to calm down so I don't say anything. And then I just answer it very matter of fact. So I need to read the previous sentence again. If you start your comment or question with a snippy tone, you're not likely to get what you want. You reap what you, s oh. Okay, first of all, Scott, delete this shit right fucking now. Because this went out to every backer. You reap what you sow? You reap what you sow. Get more with honey than vinegar, etc. You know, do unto others. Oh my gosh. This is completely rude, dehumanizing, disrespectful. You're gonna quit in the middle of the job and then throw shade on the paying customers on your way out. For example, I'm respectful toward optimum customer service reps, but criticize the company itself, which in my opinion is punching up since they are not a two-man operation, but a giant conglomerate that has a literal monopoly in my area. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. This is some sort of daddy issues, I hate capitalism bullshit. But I digress. Just be good out there, okay, guys? Um, that was like gendered terms, and that's not okay. You can make the world better and kinder in large ways and small. Ah! What is your goddamn level of privilege? Infinity? I'm out.